I'm going to preach a message today, not long, maybe four or five hours if you're new here. Um, don't worry. I don't know if your, your family told you, um, but we'll get out of here before dinner. Um, but what I want to do before I, I preach a message, I want to call some families up here and we want to dedicate these babies. Now, what we believe here at God's house is that when children are of age, that they can make the decision on their own to follow Jesus, to give their lives to God, to say, you know, God, I, I understand that I'm a sinner in need of a savior and uh, I'm choosing to uh, make you my Lord and my savior. And um, they can do that when they're when they're old enough and when they understand. And so we have a lot of babies. And so what a baby dedication is for, I know there's many people who grew up in different religions or different backgrounds and um, it's all great. But what we do here is we dedicate babies and we say that, you know what, as parents, we're gonna say, we're gonna do everything we can to model what it looks like to be a Christian, to model what it looks like to be a disciple. And we're gonna teach our son, we're gonna teach our daughter the things of God. We're going to teach them the love of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God. And we're going to teach them to love God and love their neighbor. And we're going to model what it looks like to be a Christian. And so we dedicate the babies before God. We say, God, I'm doing everything that I can as a parent to raise my son, to raise my daughter, to be a Christian, to be a disciple. And when they're of age, because we did that, then they will then make the decision on their own to be a true disciple of Jesus. Okay. And we do this in front of the church because... The church also has a responsibility because these parents are standing up in front of the church, in front of friends and family saying, church, I need help. <laughs> Come on, don't we all need help raising our kids? And so the church has a responsibility to say, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm going to play a part in doing the right thing and speaking life and, and holding your kids accountable and holding you accountable for, for doing what you said you would do in front of everyone. And so this is a special time in, in lots of parents lives and in the lives of the children and the lives of the church. And so um, thank you everyone who came out for this day. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to call um, these parents and families up here. And so my beautiful wife, Mariah, is going to make me look a lot better up here. And so if we could have the first family come up here, I'm going to call them up one by one. But if we could have Mandy or excuse me, hold on. Directions. Guys, listen for directions. Okay. Follow them. Last weekend, I got in trouble. So the second person on her list is actually first. So it's not confusing for me at all. <laughs> Parker and Nikki. Uh, would you guys come up here? Macomb with baby Lucas. Thank you guys for sitting in the reserve seats right in the front. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They were taken. Who took the reserve seats? My family. What's up, guys? How are you? Glad you're up here. Can I take baby Lucas? Can I hold him? Is that cool? If he'll let me. What's up, buddy? Or man. I'm Pastor B. He's like, I don't care who you are. Well, uh, Lucas, or Lucas and Nikki and Parker, um, be front in front of your friends and family and and more importantly in front of God. We're dedicating Lucas to uh, to be a disciple of Jesus to love God and to walk in all his ways. And so as parents, you guys are making a commitment today um, in front of everyone um, to say, we're gonna, we're gonna model what it looks like to be good parents. We're gonna model what it looks like to be disciples. We're gonna, we're gonna teach Lucas um, what it looks like to love people and to love God. And so do you guys in front of your friends, in front of your family, um, say that you are going to do those things and teach Lucas to be a disciple of Jesus? All right. And church, do you guys have their back? And you're gonna hold them accountable? Awesome. Well, we have something for, for you guys and also for Lucas. This is just a little certificate that we made. And um, Lucas Lowell, am I saying that right? Macomb, and it says uh, his first name on here, Lucas, which means the bringer of light. And uh, the spiritual connotation is enlightened. And the scripture for that is Psalms 139. It says, if I take the wings uh, of the morning and settle at the farthest limit of the sea. Even there, your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me fast. Also, it's meaning little means little wolf. I can see that, a little wolf. And it also means peaceful. And the scripture for that is Colossians 3.15. It 
It says, and that let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. And so that's for you guys. And also there's a letter on the back here that uh, me and Pastor Mariah wrote to Lucas. And so um, you guys can open that up when he's maybe like eight or nine or 10. Um, when he's old enough, when you guys think he's, he's ready to make that decision on his own, you guys open that up and read that to him. And that would help you guys in, in leading him to Christ. And so uh, if I could just pray over you guys and pray over um, Lucas, I would love that. And so, Lord, we just, um, we dedicate um, Lucas right now, this little wolf, this little bringer of light, God. Um, and God, we just pray for um, the McComb family, that you would give them wisdom, that you would give them guidance um, in how to raise Lucas in all of your ways. God, what a special child this he's called to be, a bringer of light. May he be a light in a dark place everywhere he goes, God just bring blessing and favor over their lives. And may he always follow you all the days of his life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give it up for these guys. Love you, buddy. Congrats, guys. Absolutely, thank you. All right, who's next, babe? Jordan and Mandy Mole. You guys here? Come on up. Jordan on the drums this morning. Come on. All right. I should have brought my uh, my back brace. Come on. We got some big, we got some big boys. Can I take him? Come here, buddy. Oh, oh. Whew. This is a big boy. All right. Well, Nixon, uh, your name means son of Victor and also overcomer. And the scripture for that is... Um, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It's Romans 8, 37. His middle name is Tyler, which, James? James is better. We got that one wrong, so we got to fix this one. James is, a, is the brother of Jesus, so I don't know what that means, but that's a good thing. Because I got Tyler on here, which means resourceful. But that's not his middle name, so we're not going with that. And we'll skip the scripture, too. It's all good. Someone look up what James means quick. Uh, so we'll just go with uh, Overcomer. And so um, Jordan and Mandy, in front of all your friends and family, and, and most importantly before God, um, do you guys promise to model what it looks like to be Christians, to teach um, Nixon what it looks like to love God, to love his neighbors, to love friends, and um, raise them up to be a disciple of Jesus? You guys do? Church, or you promise to hold them accountable? to raise this big linebacker up to be a disciple of Jesus. Come on. Well, hey, again, we have a letter for you guys that give him when he's when he's of age. We just opened the boys' up um, that our pastor gave us last night. And we did it when they were babies and they're seven and eight. And so uh, hold on to this thing, keep it close. Well, let me just pray over you guys and let's dedicate Nixon to the Lord. Lord, we just thank you uh, for this overcomer, God, Nixon. God, we just dedicate his life to you that whatever he faces, that he will be an overcomer, that he will show people what it looks like to love, to lead, and to fight, God. And so we thank you for Jordan and Mandy and their life and their dedication to um, raise Nixon to be a disciple of Jesus. And God, I just pray blessing over their family. I place strength and wisdom over their family. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, buddy. You're God's now. You got to do what he says. All right. It's like, whatever. Where's my milk? Harris, that's for you guys. All right, who else we got, baby? We got Jeff and April. Jeff and April Franco. And we got a little Madeline and Axel. We got some names. Come on. Axel, it looks like an Axel. I ain't messing with Axel. Axel. Axel looks like he's gonna ride a Harley. And Madeline. All right, so we'll start with Axel. Axel, your name means my father is peace. It's good for you, bro. And it also means victory. And it's Romans 16 20 says, And the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Romans 16:20. His middle name is Luke. Did we get that right? All right. Yeah, Luke, right? Luke means talented. It's a good thing. 
And the scripture for that is Exodus 31, 3. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and knowledge and in all the manner of workmanship. Those are good. Victor and talented. Then we got Madeline. Madeline, your name means magnificent. And also it means prayerful. The scripture is 1 Corinthians 14, 15. I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. Your middle name is Rose. Is that right? Rose. Rose means rose. And it also means God's gracious gift. Oh, you're God's gracious gift. Isaiah 35, 1 says, The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. And so um, Jeff and April, in front of friends and family and before God, do you guys promise to, um, to raise Axel and Madeline to be disciples of Jesus? And do you guys promise to, to model what it looks like to love God and to love your neighbor? and to raise them and teach them the Bible and pray over them and do all the things good Christians are supposed to do? You do. All right. And church, you holding these guys accountable to raise these two little God-fearing children in the ways of the Lord? Amen. Well, let me pray over you guys. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for the Franco family. God, that you would bless them, that you would keep them safe, that you would keep them together, that um, they would be a family that um, other families look to for guidance, for peace, for love, for encouragement. And God, we dedicate Axel and Madeline um, to you, God, that they would be raised up to be world changers, to be um, the rose, to be the beauty amongst a, a world full of ashes, God, that they would be victorious in everything they do. And God, they would be your children. They would show people how, how good you are. And so, God, we thank you for this family. God, I just pray favor and blessing over the Franco family. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen, amen. amen. All right, guys, love you. Oh, here you guys go. Same thing. Awesome, awesome. All right. We got John Luch. Lunch. I call it lunch, but it says it's Luch. And Chloe Anderson, come on up here. We got baby Hartley. I mean, how would you spell this? L-L-U-N-C-H. Lunch. That's how I'll spell it. All right. Luch. I know it's Luch. I'm just messing with him. Blame Mariah for the N when she wrote it. Just kidding. Blame me. Bla Ugh, see, I mess up. Blame. Husband's take blame. All right. Here we go. Hartley. That's a name right there, too. Hartley. 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 Your name means from the deer meadow and it also means victorious i could see that psalms 50 verse 15 says call upon me in the day of trouble i will deliver you and you shall glorify me and her middle name is irie saying that right irie irie and that means god watches and it also means in the light but you are in the light right now baby uh, John 2 25 says he did not needs man's he did not need man's testimony about man for he knew what was in man and so this is for you guys and also the letter for Hartley that you guys can open when she's older and um, before God and for before your family before all these people your church do you guys promise to uh, raise her to be a disciple of Jesus and model what it looks like to be Christians yourselves to walk in the ways of God and to teach her the Bible and to pray over her. And uh, you guys gonna do that? Awesome, and church, you guys gonna hold these people accountable for raising Hartley to be the light that she's called to be? All right, we're proud of you guys. We wanna pray for you guys and Hartley. And so Lord, it's, it's a baby service, so it's always gonna be babies. And so Lord, we just thank you for, for Hartley and for John and for Chloe and God, for their family, that you would just continue to bless them, that you would watch over them. God, that you would give them wisdom, how to raise Hartley to be a Christian, to be a disciple, to be the light in darkness, God, as she goes out and she's a world changer, God. And I just pray peace and provision. And I pray that the Holy Spirit would fill them afresh every single day, give them wisdom, give them guidance as they live their life, God. And I just pray abundance over them favor over them 
open doors of heaven over them. And God, we just dedicate heartily to you right now to be a world changer, to be a disciple of Jesus, to lead people to the truth and to the light, which is Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen, amen, amen. Love you guys. Congratulations. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Lane and Danielle, you guys here? Lane and Danielle Brooks, come on. Come on up here, newlyweds. Let's go. Last time I wore this sport coat was when I married them. That's the only time I do it. Baby dedications in a wedding. I was like, what are, you, what are you wearing today? Like, Sorry, babe. What's up, guys? How are you? What's up, sweetie? Oh, those eyes. Come on. Macy, your name means enlightened. And it also means from Matthew's estate. Scripture is 1 John 1.29. It says, the next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's a good scripture for you, Macy. Your middle name is Lynn. Is that right? Lynn means a clear pool. That's always fun. Yeah. A clear, clean pool. That's a good time. And it also means holy. Don't get better than that. Proverbs 9.10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One and understanding. And so, Lane and Danielle in front of your church family, your friends, and before God, do you guys promise to raise Macy to be a disciple of Jesus and teach her to love people and to love God and and read her the Bible and uh, to be a disciple of God? You do? Do you guys promise to model it yourselves and do all the things that good Christian parents are supposed to do? All right. Church, do we hold them accountable for raising baby Macy to be a disciple of Jesus? Yeah? You want to do that? Awesome. All right, well, let me pray for you. Pray for the Brooks family. Lord, we just uh, thank you for the Brooks family. And um, God, I just pray blessing over them as they, as the two of them have come together recently and joined hand in marriage. God, I just pray that you would continue to lead lead them and, and guide them. And God, Holy Spirit, fill them up afresh each and every day. God, I just pray, uh, declare favor and blessing over their family. Open windows of heaven. Their finances would be blessed, God. Their marriage would be blessed, God. And God, they would raise Macy up to be a disciple of Jesus, that she would be enlightened, which means she would be smart. She would lead people to God. She would make wise decisions as she goes, that she would seek the truth and she would find the truth and she would lead people to the truth, which is Jesus. And so God, I just pray um, favor over the Brooks family. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen, amen, amen. All right, guys. Amen. Love you. Here, this is for you guys. Awesome, awesome. So what happens when you come to a young church, you got a bunch of babies. So if you want to do this, have yourself a baby. Or don't hang around us because you'll probably end up pregnant. All right, this next couple. Manny and Priscilla LaForge. LaFarga. LaFarga. They got, they got babies everywhere. Come on up here. Manny and Priscilla. They got three of these things. They got twins. So you guys are going to have to help me. We got Ella. Sleeping Ella. Priscilla. Or uh, Priscilla. Priscilla's mom. Sophia. Is this their personalities? One's always up. One's sleeping. One's... Gotcha. So they switched. All right, and then, of course, we got Zeke. What's up, buddy? I've known Zeke since he was, like, two. I've been a soccer coach for years. And so um, this is it, guys. Friends are here. Family's here. The presence of God is here. Answered prayers are here. And so uh, in front of your friends and family and before God, do you guys promise to, to raise Zeke and Ella and Sophia to be disciples of Jesus and to to teach them to love God and to love people and to read them the Bible and pray over them. All right. You good? You want to preach? He wants to preach, I can tell. He would too. And uh, do you guys promise as parents to, to model what it looks like to be Christians and to love God and to love people and to, to raise your kids up to be disciples of Christ? Church? They got three of them. She wants two more twins. I don't know. So we got to, 
especially pray for her. Mandy's like, I'm going to the doctor right now. I'm right behind you, bro. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. We'll carpool. Yeah. All right, let me pray over the, uh, how do I say your last name? Lafarga family. Lord, we just love you. Um, God, I just pray and declare blessing over this family. Oh, actually, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to do all this stuff. Amen. We'll wrap that. We'll, we'll come back and pray later. We got, you know, I'm, I'm not giving you the shortcut. Ella, which one's Ella? All right, Ella, her name means beautiful. Come on, I can see that. It also means sustained. Psalm 91, uh, 11 says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Her middle name means rose, which means rose. That also means God's gracious gift. The wilderness and the wasteland shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. And then we got Sophia, which her name means wisdom. It also means excellent virtue. Uh, James 1.5 says, but if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask Sophia. <laughs> let him ask God who gives to all men generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Her middle name is Grace. Come on. Grace means patient. It also means full of grace. 1 Corinthians 16.14 says, and whatever you do, do it with kindness and love. And last but not least, we have Ezekiel. Zeke. Uh, your name means whom God makes strong. It also means God is my strength. First Corinthians 2.12 says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. And your middle name, you're going to have to help me with this one, Azeli. That's a name right there. It means pleasing personality with a gentle manner. It also means charismatic. That means you like to have fun. That's a good thing. Ephesians 4, verse 2 says, With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another, with love. And so these are for you guys. And uh, I know Zeke is already ready, so you can give this to Zeke. Um, and then when the babies, when they get a little bit older, give those to them. It'll be a special day. And so let me just pray for your guys' family. Lord, I just thank you for this family. God, would you just bless them and keep them safe? God, would you fill them with your spirit? God, would you just give them wisdom and, and how to uh, raise their kids to be disciples of Jesus? When, when the world comes and the enemy tries to attack, God, would you um, just cover them with your peace and with your love? And God, would you just give them, uh, Manny and Priscilla, wisdom, how to raise them, how to make the right decisions, how to, how to show their kids what it looks like to love each other and to love God. And so God, we just praise you and we dedicate Sophia and Ella and Ezekiel to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We all said... Amen, amen, amen. Love you guys. All right. We got Carrie and Raul, Tina Harrow. Come on up. We got Mason. We got Isabella, Isabel. And we got Cruz. Come on, you can clap louder than that. Come on, somebody. All right. Where, where are we at? Where are we at? Because I see two. Okay. Three right here. All right. What's up, Tina Heros? <laughs> I've known this family for a long time, too. Yeah? Is that right? I've been all your soccer coaches. You guys are answered prayer for us. And so, Raul and Carrie, today's the day in front of friends, family, your church, but most importantly, before God. You guys are making the commitment to raise your kids to be disciples of Jesus. And so you guys have a responsibility as parents to, to model what it looks like to be Christians, to love each other, to love people, and to love God. And so do you guys promise to do that and, and raise your kids to be disciples and to love to love God? They do. All right, church. Roles. You gonna hold Raul accountable? You gonna hold Carrie accountable? All right. You guys love Jesus? I know you do. All right, let me, get, let me get to this. Mason, your name means stone worker. It also means overcomer. Revelations 2.17 says, To everyone who conquers, I will give a white stone. And on a white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. And your middle name is Emery. Is that right? Emery means industrious leader. 
authority under God. Proverbs 29, 2 says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. That's awesome. That's for you. I'm going to hold that. Isabel, your name means consecrated to God. That means you're set apart for God. It also means discerning spirit. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Your middle name is Grace. Is that right? Yeah. Which means patient and full of grace. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Whatever you do, do it with kindness and do it with love. That's good, huh? And that's for you. Got it? And Cruz. Cruz, you got the best middle name there is. But Cruz, your first name means cross. Did you know that? Yeah, I know you did. It also means symbol. Philippians 2 verse uh, 8 says, And being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. And his middle name is Jesus, or Jesus, as my Latinos would say, right? Jesus, which means Savior. Come on, cross savior? That's a name right there. It also means deliverer. And so Matthew 1, 21, and she shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And so the cruise asked for you. I'll give that to mom. All right, guys, get ready. Your parents are going to raise you to love God and to raise, to love people. To be a disciple of Jesus is the best thing ever. You excited? All right, let's pray over the Tina Hero family. Lord, we just thank you uh, for this family. God, I just pray blessing over their family. I pray open windows of heaven over their family. God, I pray wisdom over their family that they would know um, the right decisions to make. The When life comes at them, God, that they would model what it looks like to love you. They would model what it looks like to be a family that's united and that's living for God. And so, God, I just pray blessing over Cruz and over Mason, over Isabel, and the, even their older kids, God, who are watching. God, I just thank you for this whole family. May they be a light unto you. May they lead many people to the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love you guys. Congratulations. I got to dedicate my, 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 life, my own now. All right. I'm going to invite my father-in-law, Dave, up here to, uh, to pray over my kids. Come on, let's welcome Dave. Dave's, Dave's security guard. He's a, he's a welcome team, teardown team, video, whatever we need, Dave. He's, Dave is here. So Dave, there's a lot of things Dave is. Dave's also a talker. So Dave, can I trust you with this? Should, should I trust him with it? You got a 50-50 shot at this. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start off with Brave, Lion Courtney. First name is Brave. Inherent meaning is spiritual warrior. Spiritual connotation is courageous endure, endurance. The scripture is Joshua 1.6. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Amen. He's going to be a leader for people to come to heaven. And he has a great start. Middle name is Lion. Meeting is cur courage and power. Spiritual connotation is royalty. You got to like that because Lion is used all throughout the Bible. And it shows the power of when the Lord comes, he's going to be like a lion. So he has power and royalty in him. Scripture for that is Proverbs 19:12. A king is like the roar of a lion, but his favor is the dew of the grass. He's going to be a sweet, strong, healthy, royalty, courageous, powerful, spiritual, and endurance man of God. Amen, amen. Brazil. Wander Courtney. First name is Brazil. The meaning is warrior, biblical leader. Spiritual connotation is brave, strong, in conflict, which 
strong in conflict, so she's going to be the mediator between all the other boys in the family. <laughs> Scripture is Judges 5.12. Wake up, Deborah, wake up. Wake up and wake up and sing a song. Arise, a bark. Lead your captives away, the son of Abayan. That's a, a old scripture, but Deborah was a, uh, a leader too. And so she is going to be that of such. Middle name is wonder. Inherit meeting is amazement. Spiritual connotation is divine power. That scripture is found in 2 Peter 1.3. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of his by coming to know him, the one who called us to his marvelous glory and excellence. Amen, amen. So they wrote their own letters to themselves, and uh, they will read them when it's appropriate. So what a great blessing that these kids have... Uh, inherited a place in the Bible where you call be called pastors. What more of a place for these kids to be brought up in? And we don't need to ask them, are you going to raise your kids spiritually with God-like people? We're going to hold them accountable and we're going to be like our little village that we're going to hold our pastors up mightily and greatly so these kids can know the foundation of the glory of God. What a beautiful moment this is. So we're just going to pray over you. Father, we just thank you for Bran and Mariah as pastors and leaders of our church. Father, we just know in our hearts that they're going to give everything they got. to give them a walk like no other. To give them the meaning of what it's like to be loved by parents, by pastors, and by our Heavenly Father. Father, we just pray this mighty power over them so they can walk this journey through their kids and through their lives. As these kids are brought up, they can see what it's like to love our Heavenly Father. We say this in agreement and all said, amen. Amen, amen. I'm... All right, was that cool or what? All right, so this is what I'm gonna do. It's 11, is it 11 o'clock, 11 one? All right, I'm gonna preach uh, um, a 45 minute message in 10 minutes, how about that? I'm going to try. I got 10 pages of notes, but I'm going to get us out of here because I know I know you're hungry. And so I'm going to try to do this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. I'm going to really preach it in 10 minutes, all right? And so <laughs> pray for your pastor. Um, I'm going to preach this message out of 2 Timothy. And really, 2 Timothy is written by this pastor named uh, Paul. Paul is, if you don't know, um, Paul is a church planter. He's a preacher. He goes all throughout um, the Middle East and Asia, and he plants church, and he teaches, and he preaches, and he's responsible for writing two-thirds of the New Testament, okay? And so he wasn't always this way, though. He wasn't always a Christian. He used, he was a Jewish man who hated the message of Jesus, who hated um, the gospel message of grace and uh, salvation, and uh, he didn't like that. So he would go out, and he would murder Christians. This is what he did. And so one day, he met Jesus, had an encounter with God, and his whole life changed, and he went on to be this church planter, this builder, who went on to write um, most of the New Testament Bible. And so he's writing to this young man named Timothy. Timothy is also a church planter, a preacher. And so this is the context of 2 Timothy. And he says this, Paul, Paul is speaking to Timothy. And he says this, I am reminded, Timothy, of your sincere faith. Paul saying, Timothy, I'm reminded of your sincere faith because, see, Timothy was living this life full of faith. And in, 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 I feel like God is telling us today that that you carry on you a life full of faith, that you can live this life full of faith. It's something that you could actually carry. It's something that's not only within you, but it's on you. You, you ever meet faith people? You're like, how are they doing that? They're just, they're just full of faith. 
It's just something that's on them. And so Paul is telling Timothy, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which was first in your grandmother, Lois. In other words, Timothy, the faith that you carry on you wasn't always on you. It was first in your grandmother, Lois. It was first on the people that came before you. He says, and in your mother, Eunice. The life you live wasn't just yours. It was in your grandmother, Lois. It was in your mother, Eunice. He says, and I am persuaded that that same faith that was in them now also lives in you. And so I want to preach a message today real quick, I promise. The title of my message is this, Pass the Blessing. Pass the Blessing. Come on, look at your neighbor real quick and just say, I know I'm a blessing in your life. Come on, tell him, I know I'm a blessing. Say, I know, I know, I know, I know I'm a blessing in your life. I know I'm a blessing. Dan, you just stay up here. I'm I'm gonna be short. But hey, real quick, give it up for Danny, just back here, just make making it real spiritual the whole time. Just like, I mean, you could say anything. Like with this, you could just say like whatever you want. Like, like go chargers it's, just, it's super spiritual it's like oh what char- what's the meaning of chargers in the bible like we could just go anywhere with the, the background music you know like uh i'll stop there because that, that could get weird but um pass the blessing pass let's stay focused okay so so this last week um if you guys don't know um i have four how many boys i got three boys and one girl and uh, I had one of these really, really proud dad, mo- dad moments. Because when you have a lot of kids, you have a lot of opportunity for, for proud dad moments. But you also have a lot of opportunity for not so proud dad moments. Well, so I had, a, I had a proud dad moment the other day. It was last Saturday. We were at home. It was kind of one of those quiet Saturdays. We were just at home doing nothing. And um, I walked downstairs and I saw my two oldest boys sitting on the couch watching WWE. Now, I, I've never showed them. I've never talked about it because I realized like at a young age, like, oh, this is fake. I kind of got over it. But when I was real, real young, I loved it. Like, come on, where's my WWE, WWF people? Like Stone Cold, Steve Austin, The Rock. That's, that's when I grew up. Mankind, The Big Show. All the, I mean, I know there's some older people like Hulk Hogan and all those different generations. But but I grew up, I love that. SmackDown, Raw, you guys remember that? You guys are acting real, real religious in here. I see. Don't, don't act like that. And this, this, this is not one of those quiet churches, right? You guys better talk back to me. You have, you have some fun in church. And so I walked, I walked down the stairs. And I, to be honest, at first I was like, should I be proud after watching wrestling or should I be terrified? Because I know, I know where this leads to, right? And so I walked down and I was like, oh, you know, I'm kind of proud. So I, I walked downstairs. Now, they're smart. And so they were watching like this. It wasn't a regular WWE. It was like, the, like a pay-per-view one. And I was like, wait, how are these boys watching? Like, did they pay to watch it? It was like, it was a Royal Rumble. And like all the big celebrities were there. I was like, what, how do they find this? Like, I'm gonna check my, my bill. I probably got a pay-per-view bill. But they were watching this Royal Rumble wrestling match. And if you don't know what that is, basically every two minutes, a new wrestler gets to enter the ring. So every two minutes, a new person runs down and the whole goal of it is to throw the other person out. So if you get thrown out, you're out. And so by the end of this whole match, there's like 30 people in the ring. It's crazy. And so we all got suckered into watching this thing for like 30 minutes. Like we were all like, go, you know? Well, I knew this wasn't gonna end good because as soon as it ended, turn off the TV, guess what we did? We had a Royal Rumble right on the couch. And um, we're real competitive. Like I don't lose my sons, I teach them, loser. I'm just kidding, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we, we are competitive. And so we're wrestling, They're, they do jujitsu, like don't let them fool you. Uh, so we're wrestling and um, they're both on top of me, like trying to, whoever touches the floor is out. It's like lava. And so I, I go down and I take my biggest boy, Bronx, down with me. I'm like, you're coming down with me, son. That way Blaze can win. And so I take Bronx with me down and uh, we both fall out. We're out. We're out of the Royal Rumble. And so Blaze, my six-year-old, he stands up on the edge of the couch, like the arm, the high part, and our, our floor is tile, like hard tile. And so he stands up there. And he's like, I am the champion. And my eight-year-old don't like that. And so he lunges and shoves him off of the couch as hard as he can. My six-year-old smacks his head, blood everywhere, busted open, stitches, hospital trip, right? Didn't end well. That was my my, my sad dad moment. But it started out real good. 
And so I'm telling this story to my mom and I'm like, mom, yeah, Bronx like didn't like it. He pushed plays off. He busted his head. We had to go to Kaiser. He didn't get staples. Like this is a whole ordeal. Right. And my mom was like, you know what? You used to do that same thing. You used to stand up on the edge of the couch and you used to jump off. You used to smack your head so much so that we couldn't even take you to the same hospital anymore. We had, we had, a, we had hospitals on rotation because we didn't want CPS to get called on us. And so we would go to like, we were lived in Orange County for a little bit. So we would go to like Irvine and Costa Mesa and Huntington and Sylvia. Like we would, it was on rotation. Cause you know, if you came in there more than once with a bump on your head with the kid, they're calling on you. And she was like, that's, that's something you pass that to them. You pass that down to them. And I was just thinking like, man, isn't life so crazy that you can pass things down to your kids that you don't even want to, that, that you can pass down habits and traits and you can pass down all these things to your kids and, and those little marks on their body that get passed down to them and those little, those little habits that they do that get passed down to them and, and, and the, the personalities that get passed down to them and, and all these things get passed down to your kids, whether you know it or not. See, your faith can get passed down to your kids or your doubt could get passed down to your kids. Your, your, your speaking life could get passed down to your kids or your speaking Death could get passed down to your kid. Your confidence could get passed down to your kid or your insecurity could get passed down to your kid. Just like the Bible said, the holy priest Aaron, right? He said, your, your garments, Aaron, your garments will be passed down to your kids. Meaning that your kids will wear your faith. Your kids will wear your inheritance. They will inherit what you give them. You have a responsibility as parents to pass the blessing of God onto their lives. So you see, right now, God wants to bless you. God wants to bless your family. God wants to bless you, your, your kids. God, ha God has an open window of heaven for your life. God doesn't want you to live in, in hurting all the time and struggling all the time. No, God wants to bless you. I'm praying right now and I'm declaring over your life the blessing and the favor of God over your life. Open windows of heaven right now. Finances over your life. Healing over your life right now. In the name of Jesus, come on, you have to receive this, parent and pass this blessing onto your kids because they will wear something. They will wear your faith or they will wear your doubt, but it's up to you as parents to pass that onto them. And so I have six things here, six things. And I'm going to make this real quick because I have honestly two pages of notes for each thing, but I'm just going to give them to you. Six blessings to pass to your children. I know next week is Christmas. We're going to be giving them all kinds of gifts. And um, most of those gifts will be broken in before the new year right? Or within a year. Let's just be honest. But these are six gifts that you can give your kids that will last forever or six blessings that you could pass to your kids. And I won't go too deep on them. Um, but number one is this. Give your kids a gift to love the word of God. To love the word of God. The Bible says this, Isaiah 40 verse 8, the grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. See, there's something eternal that you can give your kids that will last forever. It will last forever. Teach your kids to love the word of God. See, here's the thing, and this is, this is a big misconception in our culture. You cannot know God and not know the word of God. You cannot know God and not know the word of God. See, because what happens is without knowing the word of God, you don't know the real God. And so what happens is you create a God in your image what you think God is, what you think God says, what you think God feels about your situation. But if you don't know the word of God, you create a God in your image and you end up just worshiping yourself and you say it's Jesus. But I ain't gonna touch too much on that because we don't got much time. We got visitors here today. And so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna offend too many people. But see, scripture is what keeps us rooted. Scripture is what keeps us grounded. Scripture is what keeps us keeps us, when we, when we take scripture and we form our life around scripture, not take God and form him around our life. Give your, kif, give, give your kids the blessing to love the word of God. See, the, the Bible is the only thing that when you read it, it reads you. It's the only thing that when you read it, it reads you, it, it works on you, it, it purifies you, it corrects you, it cleanses you, it, it encourages you, it renews your mind, it, it changes your perspective, it restores your soul, it, 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 it reads you, it reminds you. Give your kids the gift to love the word of God. Number two is this, a prayer life. Give your kids a prayer life. I promise you this is a gift for them because in prayer, God hears your voice and you hear God's voice. See, what God does on earth, he does in partnership with us. And he, that's why every single week 
we get up here and we pray, God, use us. God, let us be your hands and your feet. God, let us see the broken. God, let us see the hurt. God, let us go out and make a difference in this community. We do it through prayer. You see, your family will be limited by the prayers that you pray. Psalm 66, 19 says this, but certainly God has heard me. God has heard you. He has attended to the voice of my prayers. He has attended to the voice of my prayers, which means you need to give voice to your prayers. Not just thought to your prayers. Come on, we all think prayers. We all write prayers. But the Bible says give voice to your prayers. Speak your prayers. Speak the word of God. Dads, listen to me. See, here's the thing. We, we come into church and um, like I, I get it, right? Like I'm a pastor. I do this for a living. I stand up here and I preach and I clap and I sing and I act real crazy sometimes and I get it, but I'm also a man. I'm also just like you. I also walk in here and I don't want to sing in front of 100 people. I also walk in here and I don't want to clap and I don't want to smile and I don't want, I'm, I'm a man but I know that my kids are watching me. And when, and when Pastor Mariah says, come on, let's lift up our hands. Come on, let's sing. Come on, let's clap. I know my boys are watching me. And so I have to give voice. I, I, I have to, 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 to do the things of God. It's so funny. I always talk to guys. I'm, guys are like, I'm just not emotional. I don't sing. I don't clap. I'm just, I'm just not emotional, right? Where are my non-emotional guys? Not lifting their hands, right? All of them, right? It's like, I'm, that's just guys are like, I'm not emotional. I'm just, I'm just not that guy, right? But I, I went to the Charger Chiefs game on, on Thursday and I saw 80,000 emotional men. All of them, full of emotion, screaming, yelling, shirts off, bellies out, drinking beer, crying, slapping hands, all full of emotion, all of them. See, we'll get real emotional about the things we care about, right? You ever got a real emotional at 24 Hour Fitness about to get in a fight in the basketball court? Real emotional. You, you ever got emotional on the golf course when you hit a bad shot, about to throw your club, about to smack it over your knee? Real emotional, right? What, hap what happens when you come into church, you are emotional. You just have to choose to use your emotions to show your kids what the right things to be emotional are about. It's okay to cry. It's okay to clap. It's okay to cheer. It's okay to rejoice. It's okay to lift up your hands. It's okay to give voice to your prayer. Show a little bit of emotion. It's a gift that you can give your kids. Talk back to me, people. Don't be so quiet. Show some emotion. Come on. Number three is this. I love this one. My dad's here, so I'm real fearful right now because he might have a belt or I might get a spanking. But number three is this. Give your kids the gift of discipline. Give your kids the gift of discipline. See, a no is a gift from God. When you tell your kids no, that's actually a gift. They don't know it yet. See, I used to have a spanking chart. I got some trouble so much, we just made a chart out of it. Monday, just wake up, you got three spankings a day. I don't know what you did yet, but you got three of them coming but it's a gift. Discipline is a gift. The Bible says, Proverbs 13, 24, whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. See, it's not fun when you discipline as the parent. It gets old, it's tiring. But, and kids are smart. Kids know how to work you. The whole one, two, three thing doesn't work. Some, some of you guys are still counting. You're like, I'm 498. That's us, by the way. See, kids know, why would I stop at one when I can get to three? Just tell them no, right? Discipline, it's a gift from God. And so you have to be, you have to make God more consistent in your kids' life than the devil is in their lives. Because let me tell you, the enemy is consistent in their lives. When they go to school, the stuff that you don't even know what's going on, the things that you don't even know what's being said, the, the stuff on Instagram and the stuff on TikTok that you don't have no idea what's happening, the devil is consistent in their life. And as parents, you have to be, make God more consistent in their life than the devil is in theirs. Discipline. Don't discipline angry. Don't, don't match their emotion. But be consistent when you do it. See, because here's the thing. If you will parent your kids and discipline them when they're young. You can be their friends when they're old. But if you befriend them too young, you will lose your voice and lose their friendship when they're old. And number four is this, give them the gift, pass the blessing of time to them. See, what my, my boys is, their, their most consistent request to me every single day is not dad feed me, it's, dad, look at me. 
Dad, look, they want my time. Their love language is time. Children spell love, T-I-M-E. Pass them the gift of time. Some of us need to just sit down at the dinner table with our kids, as awkward as it might be, turn off the TV, put away the phones, put on some, some music in the background and just spend time with your kids. Even if it's real, even if your kid is, is 16 and giving you attitude, make them sit there. You're the parent, make them sit down, make them put their phone down because presence matters. They might be rolling their eyes, oh, this is annoying, oh, this is chicken sucks, oh, this is nasty, but I promise you it's a gift. Number five is this, give them a gift to love God's house. Not just this church, but the church. Give them a gift to love God's house. Joshua 24, 19, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If your kids live in your house, I don't care if they're 50 or 15, if they live in your house, make them come to church. Make God's house a priority in your life. See, you can make the decision for them if they're in your house. You can set the values of this house. Oh, you want something to eat tonight? Well, we go to church. Oh, you want air conditioning in the summer? You want heat in the winter? Oh, you, you go to church in this house. That's what we do. See, if you're sick, it's okay to stay home. But if you're just at home chilling on a Sunday, you better be in church. This, that's for me in my house. We serve the Lord. It's a non-negotiable in my house. It's a gift that I promise you, they're sitting there on the phones right now, but I promise you the spirit of God is speaking to them and they don't even know it. Seeds are being planted in them upstairs right now. They don't even know it. Give them the gift to love God's house. Cause see, if you make church optional, don't be surprised when your kids make God un optional. If you make church optional, don't be surprised when your kids see God is unnecessary. Because see, God will do something in, in this house, in this church that you can't do in your house. You, you can teach them values and you can teach them hard work and you can teach them don't run in the street and you can teach them stay up late and wake up early and work hard and eat healthy. You can teach them all the values and you should be doing that. But there's something that happens when you get under the anointing, when you get in God's house, there, there's a conversation. There's someone in here that's gonna speak to your kids. There's a, there's a prayer, there's a verse, there's a scripture, there's a sermon, there's, there's a friendship. There's something that's gonna happen in the house of God that your kids need make God's House, non-negotiable, it's a gift you can give them. And the last one is this, pass the blessing of words of blessing. Words of blessing. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit. See, words are powerful. You're gonna eat the fruit of your words, either life or death. And Jesus says that you will be judged for every idle word that you speak, which means every lazy word that you, every word that wasn't encouraging, every word that wasn't life-giving, every word that didn't help someone, every word that didn't lead someone to the, you will be judged for every word that you speak, every lazy, every fight that you have. Those are lazy words. Don't fight in front of your kids. Don't complain in front of your kids. Those are lazy words. Save it for the bedroom. Save it for a different time. Don't be lazy. Don't just say, don't just spout out at the mouth. Don't be lazy with your words. You will be judged for them. D don't complain about the church in front of your kids. Don't complain about the pastor in front of your kids. If you have a problem, deal with it directly. Don't complain in front of your kids. See, what will happen is you'll get over the fight. You'll get over the, the hurt, but, you're, but, but you planted a seed in your kid. Then they don't understand. Don't be lazy with your words. Speak life, speak blessing over your kids. Genesis, I'll end it with this. Genesis 42, 20, it says this. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what their father said to them when he blessed them. This is important right here. Giving each the blessing appropriate to them. See, this is for people with multiple kids. You, you know this, your kids are different. Your kids are not the same. They got different personalities. But see, so oftentimes we try to say, why aren't you more like your brother? Why aren't you more like your sister? The Bible says, give each the blessing appropriate to them. They're all different. They're all unique. Dads, you have to learn to be the prophet of your house. You have to learn to speak life. 
You have to learn to speak blessing. You have to learn to speak healing. You have to learn to speak vision. You have to learn to say, I, I believe in you. You have to learn to say, I love you. You have to learn to say, no matter what happens, I, I, I'm still on your side. I still have your back. You have to learn to be the prophet of your house that can speak the word of God over your kids. You must speak possibility over them. You, you have to say, oh, no, son, you're gifted enough. Oh, no, daughter, you're, you're talented enough. Oh, that boy doesn't want you. Oh, there's a better one out there for you. There's something on the inside. You, you have, I'm proud of you. You have what it takes. I, I can't believe God would, would give you to me. What a gift that is from God. I, I bless you, son. I bless you, daughter. You, you're beautiful. You're a world changer. Dads, I'm talking to you. You have to learn to speak this over your family. People that have influence over your kid, you, you, over kid, you have to learn how to speak this over your family. See, here's the thing, because your kids will believe you. Your kids will believe you. Now, your teenagers, they're not going to act like they believe you. They're going to, Dad, you're so annoying. Ugh. Right? But they will walk into their room. No go. Dad thinks I'm beautiful. They really think I could do it. See, dads, do me a favor real quick. And I just feel the Holy Spirit speaking to me right now. Dads, would you stand up for me? If you're a dad in here, would you just stand up? If you're a stepdad, would you stand up? I want to tell you this, dads, that this is a word from God, that everything that your kids need is in you. Everything that you need, everything that your kids need is in you. You have what it takes. You're wearing the garment. You're wearing the faith. You're wearing the love. You just have to learn how to speak it over them. How to speak the word of God over them. It's in you. You have it. You are enough. You have the right words to say. And so I'm going to challenge dads real quick. Tonight, before you go to bed, if you're a dad and your kids live at home, I challenge you, go in your kid's room tonight, leave, leave mom out, just you and your kids. And I want you to pray for your kids. As awkward as it might be, I want you to sit down with them and I want you to pray with them. Even if you don't know what to say, I want you to just say, come on, son. Come on, daughter. We're going to pray. We're just going to say, we love you, God. Thank you for our house and thank you for our family. Thank you for our food. And if you have older kids that don't live at home, I challenge you. Call your kids. FaceTime them tonight. Get them on FaceTime. It's going to be real weird. And you're going to go, hey, before I go to bed, son, before I go to bed, I don't care if they're 30 or 50. I want you to call them and say, hey, real quick, before you go to bed, I just want to pray for you. And you watch your 30-year-old melt. You watch your 35-year-old daughter start crying. Say, I just want to pray for you. And what will happen is, dads, you will become the most consistent, secure voice in their life. So when the world comes and starts speaking death and starts speaking doubt and starts speaking insecurity and starts speaking all the things that the world speaks, they will know that they have a dad who's there in their corner no matter what. And I can go to my dad no matter what I'm facing and my dad will speak life over me. My dad will pray for me. My dad will be the consistent positive voice in my life. And so I don't know where that came from, but that's for you dads. So why don't we all stand up in this place today and let me just pray. And now this is, a, this is not a normal service. This was obviously geared more towards kids, but we all have a responsibility because the truth is the church is one big family. And so rather if you have kids or not, you have influence over kids. You have influence over your friends' kids and your coworkers' kids. And some of us grown men in here are kids. And so we have a responsibility to pass these gifts to, to pass the truth, to pass the word of God on to, to the next generation. It's our responsibility to pass the, the favor of God to the next generation. 
And so let me just pray over every single person in here that you would feel loved, that you would feel called, that you would feel worthy. And so God, we just love you. God, we, we lift up the name of Jesus. And, and Father in heaven, we thank you for being a secure, strong voice in our life, for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us, for paying for our sins, that when we didn't deserve it, uh, when he sacrificed his life for us, traded places for us, so that we can freely receive the gift of salvation so that we can be loved. And so God, we just thank you for what you're doing in this house. God, I thank you for every parent in this house, mom, dad. I thank you for the anointing, for the gifting that's on their life. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would be with them, that you would fill them afresh, that you would remind them every day that you are there, that you would remind them every day that they have enough, that they are conquerors, that they are overcomers, that they are world changers, that they have the wisdom, they have the knowledge, they have the discernment to lead their kids and to guide their kids. And God, I pray for all the kids being raised up in the house of God, that when they're older, they should not depart from what they're being taught as kids, that, that, that the seeds are being planted, even though they might not be paying attention now, God, but the Holy Spirit is moving on the inside of them. And we will see the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. And this is how, this is how the message of Jesus continues to be moving from generation to generation is when disciples rise up and say, you know what, God's been too good to to me. He's been too faithful in my life, and I have to tell somebody about it. I have to tell someone about his grace. I have to tell someone about his mercy. I, I was once lost, and now I can uh, now I'm found. I was once blind and now I can see. I, I once was broken, but now I'm healed. I, I once was hurting, but now I'm healed. See, this is the message of the gospel that without him, we are nothing but because of what he did for us on the cross. We now have life in him. Come on, God has been so good to you. Even if you don't know it, God has been so good to you. He gave you your family and he gave you the breath in your lungs. And so every hands lifted in this place, God, we just surrender to you. We say, God, have your way. God, use us. God, that's our prayer. Use us to bring hope and peace and light and life to this hurting, dark world. God, we praise you. We thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen, amen, amen. amen.